When you got black belt? Right here. So you're your yellow belt, right? Dude, he said he's the best belt. So we're going to talk about trig functions for any angle. And realizing that on the XY plane, all the triangles you've been dealing with have been these acute angles. Didn't matter how big that angle was. But you're dealing with angles that would only be positive uh, sides of the triangle. That's what you've been doing. But what, but what if we open the angle all the way out here into quadrant two? Most of yours have been in quadrant one. Where? I don't see it. It's right there. That? That? That's it? There you go. Don't get my lunch. So... If your angle opened up far, what we do, and you're going to find out that we care about this angle now, we call that, that's called a reference angle. That's called a reference angle. And what we do to work with that angle is the point actually moved on a circle. See, this point, you could say, Went, could go all the way around this circle. And so we can find out that that point has an X and a Y value. Yep. And what happens is we put, may take that triangle down here. This point here has an X, Y value, meaning my X would be the distance here my y would be the distance here. And then since it's a circle, then this is the radius of the circle. The hypotenuse is the radius of the circle. That's how we're going to use it. Okay? So, let me read what they said. In the previous lesson, you found trig functions for positive acute angles. We didn't find any trig values for negative angles. What if I had gone the other way around the circle? Those would be negative angles. We also did only acute. This angle here, technically this angle could be 120 degrees. That's an obtuse angle, which is why we are only going to use this angle here because 120 is too big. So I only use the acute angle that is created, which this is what the magic of trig is. I'm talking about a 120 degree angle. And if I want to find the sign of a 120 degree angle, it's going to be related to the sign of a 60 degrees. How do I know? Isn't there 180 degrees all the way here? Well, if this is already 120, then this must be 60. So what I do is I use this angle, the 60-degree angle, in my work. But be careful. The X could be negative, and it is negative there. The Y up here is positive because it goes up. You just have to pay attention to your positives and negatives now. You didn't have to worry about positive and negatives before. Okay. So that's what they said. In the past, we were using positive acute angles. We will now find trigonometric angles for any angle. Let theta be an angle in standard form. Well, that's what this is. This is standard form. Around a circle. Okay. Using the points x comma y. Shh. And that point is on the terminal side of theta. When you open the angle up, where it stops opening is called the terminal side. The distance from P to the origin is called R. And we're going to use this formula. Why would it be called R? Let me see. 
if I call this R, that must mean, I think I almost erased it all, that from here to this, and it did not erase it, but right here, R must be a radius of this circle. If I would have continued drawing and I drew it down here, that would be the radius of the circle. If I drew it up in quadrant one, that would be the radius of the circle. So here, here's, the, here's my formula. And you're going to see why it's the truth. R will always be shh, the square root of x squared plus y squared. It's Pythagorean theorem. Yes, it is. R squared is x squared plus y squared. So just different letters. The If you think about your angle, you going to sign in, sir? Right here. And uh, it is 1017. Just think about it. I'll just do a simple one out here. Here's my circle going out this way, all right? So if I draw it to point P and I drop this down, that's my X, that's my Y, their hypotenuse will be your R. The hypotenuse will always be labeled as R. Remind me to look at the attendance before you leave. You didn't get the lecture notes? If you keep up with the lecture notes, you can get credit for the attendance because it's been past uh, 10 minutes. Yes. Yes. So the formula would be to get rid of the squaring. So if I square root both sides, then you end up getting R is the square root, the hypotenuse, that's what that is, is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So by looking at the triangle, let me draw, let me draw a picture down here. For instance, uh, we're going to be doing the point is at 9, negative 12. So we're going to look at this to help me out with those letters up there. 9, negative 12. Here's 9. <laughs> All the way over here. Here's negative 12. If that's where the terminal point goes, something like that, then that's my R. This is my X. This is my Y. That's my R. Think about what sine is going to be for that triangle. If your angle is in here, sine is going to be this y value over the hypotenuse. This y value over the hypotenuse. So we write y over r. Uh, y over r. Then the cosine... What I did, is, I'll, erase the, I'll erase all the insides first for a minute. Oh, that didn't help. Let me erase it all. All right? Because you guys were talking too over there. So if I have this circle, and I run a point at 9, negative 4, that 9 would be, if that was my 9 negative 12, that would tell me that this distance here would be my 9. That's my x value, x comma y. And my negative 12 would be, what, would be this y value, so the angle goes out. I have to touch that point. There's that point. So what we do is we drop a perpendicular to that point, and that is my x value right here. This is my the same distance as y. 
it's the how far down, and this is my r. So if this is my theta, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, that would be y over r, and that's what I wrote. Now, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, if this is theta, the adjacent would be the letter, somebody, X. over R. R. X over R. And then tangent would be opposite, right here, over the adjacent, y over, y over X. So you've got to memorize these. And then flipping them, we won't think too hard. We know that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. I'll just flip it. R over y. R over x. X over y. So those six things you have to memorize. Just like you got done memorizing Sokotoa, O over H, A over H, O over A. Now we're on a circle, because we can talk about any angle that you could think of. You literally could, with this method, find the sine of 120 degrees. Your calculator can do it as well. And you're going to find out that the negatives matter. Not for sine, for 120, but the cosine would have to be negative. And if you did your calculator, just prove it to me, guys. A cosine of 120 degrees, somebody key it in and verify to me that it is a negative answer. 120? Yeah. Negative 0.5. See, it is negative. And so if I do a 250 degree angle, then I'll bet you any money that the sign is negative for that one too. Negative. Sign of a negative 250. And I bet you the cosine's negative also. Yeah? And I bet you tangent's positive. Tangent of what? Of the same angle. 250. Positive 250. So well, how do I know that to be true? Because I've done a lot of them. Yes? The nurse. So back to what I was saying. Memorize these, because that's what we do when we're on a circle. Okay, so now, number one, I've already started doing it. I put my point down there, but let me erase the stuff that I don't need now. It's the same circle. It'll let me erase it. Come on. It's being, it's being stubborn. There it goes. Let me erase everything that I don't need. And pen, pen, pen. Okay, so I'll close this off. And there's my point right here. Angle goes from the vertex to that point. Drop the number here. And if this is my x and this is my y, then my x is a positive 9 right here. x is a positive 9. If this is my y and it's negative, it makes sense. Going down is negative, then this distance here must be a negative 12. A negative 12. This is my r, but they didn't give it to me. Do you think I'm going to need it? Because look at, I do the first one. If sine of theta is y over r, and I know what the y is. The y is a negative 12. But I don't know what r is. How would I find it? Well, I gave you the formula. Because here's how it would be. If this is my x and this is my y, x squared plus y squared has to be the hypotenuse squared. Then r, once I square root both sides, 
just memorize this because it's why I wrote it up here. So you can memorize that. What R will always be X squared plus Y squared. So in this case, as I'm solving it, R will be the square root of, what's my X value? Labeled right here, X. Nine squared. What's my Y? I labeled it. Plus, it's a negative 12 squared. But when you square a negative number, don't be afraid. It's going to become positive, right? So what is uh, 9 squared? 81. What is negative 12 squared? 144. Let's finish this up over here. Add those up. R is the square root of? I'm not sure why that turned yellow on me. 35. I mean, 235. Ooh, wrong color. Hold on. Is it 235? Hold on. Hold on. What did it do that for? There. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's crazy. It did cover it, but I didn't. Hold on. I lost it. Where did it go? Well, okay, it go. I should have just left it. Oh, yeah, all I wanted to get rid of was this other one. Hold on. I got to get rid of that. It's bothering me. Yeah, square root of 225. Oh, that's a perfect square. 225, then R is 15. So I know a 15 has to go here. Right? All right, let's do the, co the, the, the cosine. That is X over R. What's my X? Nine. Nine over 15. By the way, both those can be reduced, right? What does 12 over 15 become? Divide by three. Four over five. How about this one? Negative four. Yes, over five. Five. Jose, yes, sir. good talking over there. I'm not talking. It's your group. Take care of them. Tangent is y over x. What does that give me? See, I notice he didn't forget the negative, and he's, he's very smart not to do that. Negative 12 over... It's actually negative... 12 over what? Over 9, but that reduces to what? Okay, so if I'm just flipping them for the other ones like we did before, do I have to think that hard? That negative 4 over 5 becomes a negative 5 over 4, doesn't it? That was a negative 4. Well, just for you then, I will... I will adjust it just for you. As long as my pen let me do it. It was a negative 4. And then if I flip the cosine, that becomes 5 over 3. Is that correct? And, oh, that, that one's not negative because the x was not negative. See, at least he's thinking. And this one has to stay negative because negative 3 over 4. Notice that could have very well have been like an angle of a, two, of a 300 degrees. Because it's not quite to 360 and it's bigger than 270. So the signs act the same way. So are we turning these in right after? Probably. Because we're not going to finish it all, so... I thought I was going to finish it all, but I didn't for first period. Maybe this class will be different. Up or what do you want to do? You're all set? Yeah, thank you.
Look at number two. Now, number two, obviously, they're always going to get a little harder. This time, the point on the circle, let me go ahead and try to draw the X, Y, and the circle on top of it. You know me. I'm not much of an artist. I'm the only math teacher in the world that can't really draw a circle. But what I'll do is I'll try to pretend to make an accurate circle here. Close enough. And where is the point going to be at? Would that be left and down? Would that be like somewhere over here? Where the angle opened up all the way to here? Yes. yes. So I'll zoom in so you can see what's happening. The angle, this value here, if this was a negative 6, negative 12, that's the ordered pair. That means this value, let me do black, or let me do another color, let me do red. This distance here has to be a negative 6. Because that's my x. And the r is a negative 12. That means down has to be the negative 12. What am I missing again? I, I got my x. I got my y. I'm missing the r. So you got to go over here and do the scratch work. R is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. R is equal to, what is x in this tr problem now? It's not a 6. Negative. Negative 6 squared plus, oh, it wasn't a 12. It only says a 2. Uh, nobody's corrected me. Negative 2. Where did I get a 12 from? Was that the last problem? That was the last problem, yeah. I'm glad I caught it before we actually did any math on it. So what is 6 squared? And what is a negative 2 squared? I should negative 6 squared. Would that give me r is equal to the square root of 36 plus 4? 36 plus 4. Is how much? 40. r equals to the square root of 40. And what did we do at the beginning of trig ratios when I had the hypotenuse being a square root of a number? Was I allowed to use an estimated decimal? We never did. We had to break, we had to simplify it. What perfect square goes into 40? Uh, perfect square? Yep. 40? Yep. 8? Eight. 8's not perfect. 5, 4. four. four. This is the square root of 4 times the square root of 10. What is the square root of 4? 2. So r is equal to 2 square roots of 10. So, so here's what I'm going to do. I should have done this for the last class. I'm going to label everything I found. We know the x is equal to a negative 6. We know the y is equal to a negative 2. We know the r is equal to a 2 square roots of 10. Why will r always be positive? Because it can be negative. Why not? When you square root a number, yes, you technically say plus or minus, but the radius of a circle is never negative. The radius of a circle is always a positive number, okay? Now that I know what each of those are, take a second and let's write out those things. That's how we memorize them. Sine was y over r. Flip it. r over y. Cosine x over r. Over r. Flip it. Over 
r over x. Tangent, y over x, flip it, x over y. The more that you say it to yourself and you write it, then you'll start being natural. When you're looking at these angles all around a circle, we care about the x's and the y's. Yes, sir? Sure will. Now let's, start, let's plug in our numbers. And I gave you the numbers. I isolated all three of those numbers. That makes it kind of easy. So sine is going to be what? Uh, negative 2 over what? Okay, what's wrong with that picture? Can't have a square root in the bottom, so how do I get rid of it? You multiply top and bottom by a square root of 10 over square root of 10. Remember that skill? So negative 2 square root of 10 over, over 2, not square root of 10, times 10. Because when you take the square root of 10 times the square root of 10, it cancels it out to 10. Now, wait a minute. Those twos could cancel, couldn't they? Yeah, so I'll say, uh, so square you were going to say that? Square root of 10 over 10. Negative square root of 10 so over 10. I'm sorry I didn't hear you. There it is. Negative square root of 10 over 10. Let's flip it while we're down here. Do we flip the original answer except for the twos? Those cancel, right? So... If I don't want to flip my new answer. Negative, I mean, square ten. Over what? Over is there still a negative there? Yes. Yeah, there's still a negative there. So you're telling me it's a negative square root of 10 over 1? Mm. Over 1? Yes. Or just leave it as negative square root of 10, right? I agree with you, 100%. Look at that. We killed two birds with one stone. What kind of birds? Uh, what kind of eagles? No, we didn't kill a bald eagle. A vulture. We killed a vulture. So x is a negative 6. R still is a 2 square roots of 10. Okay, the 2 cancels out, leaving the top a 3, right? So when I multiply top and bottom by the square root of 10 over square root, Negative 3 square roots of 10 all over, over 10. 10. Flip it. Wait, sir, how do you get a 3? Uh, twos go into 6s three times. Oh, okay. We just reduced it before we did the... We reduced it before I did this. Square root of 10 time, over square root of 10. That's, that's what we did in our head. We did a lot of those before, so I hope you understand what we did. If not, wave at me, stop me, and let's flip it. Do I flip the original or the new answer? I'm going to flip the negative 3 over square root of 10. That turns into a negative. Negative square root. Oh, say it again. Negative 3 square root of 10. Is that what you said? All over. All over. Oh, we're flipping it, aren't we? All right, tell me what to write. Well, I thought it was going to be like negative 3 times 10 over. Negative 3 times 10 over. Negative 3 times 10. No, the negative 3 goes in the bottom, sir. I thought since you flip it. Yeah, I got to flip it. So it's, this, it's the negative square root of 10 over. Three, I think. What is, what is a three times the square root of ten? Three square roots of ten. Sir, are we just supposed to go ten over negative three square root of ten? Then you got to rationalize it again. I, I decided to take this answer. Let me get this cheat sheet out that I did for you. Don't look at this. Look at what's there. Negative 3 over the square root of 10. That flips to a negative square root of 10 over 3. I'm flipping this, Ryan. I'm flipping this. Do you see it? So there were a couple questions. I'm happy to go over it. The rest of you are okay? Yes. 
All right. Let's finish this up. Yes, sir. So, y over x. What was my y? y is negative 2 over a negative 6. It simplifies to 1 over 3. The negatives cancel? Yes. 1 over 3. So, if I flip it, a positive 3, right? Look at that. Yeah. Okay, there's that page. That's it. We're good to go. We're left. <laughs> Which one do you want to see? The notes or number one or number two? We're moving on. So whoever wanted to go to the restroom, now's a good time. Sir, did we ever get the cosine at the top of that page? So what are we doing here? Problems. I'm going to say here, we're talking about how do we know about negatives and positives trig functions. It says, depending on the location of the terminal side of the angle, trigonometric functions can be positive or negative. Using your knowledge of the trigonometric function value, identify the functions that are positive in each quadrant. What I'm going to do, I'm going to give you this. It says, remember the phrase, all students take calculus. All students take calculus in that circle. Quadrant one is all. All trig functions are positive in quadrant one. Think of the A as being in the word all. The S stands for the word sine. So sine is positive in quadrant two. So but we learned in lesson one of the angles when an angle opens up like let's there's my here's my initial side it opens this way so you first open up in quadrant 1 you keep opening it it goes to quadrant 2 keep opening that leg to quadrant 3 keep quit, keep opening to quadrant 4 that's the order that the angle opens 1 2 3 and 4 so all and sine so if sine is positive wouldn't also be the reciprocal positive as well Cosecant. And the T stands for? Tangent. tangent. So the tangent's positive. And if the tangent is positive, so is the? Cotangent. The reciprocal. And then the C probably stands for what word? Co cosine. cosine. And so... Cosine is positive here, and so would its reciprocal, secant, right? Now, I can give you another way to remember how we know when things are positives. It has to do with the x's and the y's. Think for a minute, guys. In quadrant one, are my x's positive or negative? Positives. Are the y's positive or negative? That's why sine and cosine are both positive in that quadrant. Which means everything is positive then. Look, look at the y value. This is the y value being positive. Look at the y value over, I mean the x value over here. Would that not be in a negative x's? Hello? So anything with an X by itself would be negative, like uh, cosine would be negative there, anywhere in this area. And the Y values in this quadrant are still positive. So sine is still positive. Well, there we said sine was positive because the Y value is positive. Cosine is negative because it uses the X. What about the tangent? It uses an x, right? 
And the y is positive. The y is positive, but the x is negative. That makes tangent negative. But if you go down in this third quadrant here, both the x and the y's are negative, which is why tangent's positive. A negative divided by negative is a positive. So you could always think of it in x and in y's. Maybe that's what I was doing a minute ago when I was showing off. So he wants us to list every quadrant positive in quadrant 1. Well, we already said it. Sine, cosine, tangent, and then flip them all. Cosecant, secant, cotangent. All of them. It'd be easier to say all, but his directions were list them. Quadrant two, all students. This was all. This is, this is students. That means the sine, so the sine and the cosine. And then flip them both. Cosecant and secant. All students take means tangent, oh, that's it, right? Yeah. Only tangent was there and cotangent. Wait, did we get quadrant two correct? Why did I, why did I put cosine? No, you need the cosecant and secant. It's supposed to be sine and cosine. Okay, pretend that didn't happen. Just pretend it didn't happen. I don't know. Tell me. All students. It's sine and cosecant. No. No? Sine and cosecant. Just these two. That's why I said just, uh, why am I not right? Just, well, you can just put a line. Why is it writing in that color? There. That's cool. I can write in white. I was writing in white for some odd reason. I did. I can too. This is me. I did. I know. Cause it's in white. You should write in the black words. Get ready to the black words. This is me. Yeah. That. That's. Well, I never used that to erase except for one other time. Why are you making me play, Ryan? Yeah, and I was just, I was a willing partner. Yeah, let's play around. Uh, quadrant four, calculus. Cosine. and the reciprocal is secant. Now, I have to. All right, so number three. All we want to do is, is figure out where is theta going to be at, what quadrant. If you know cosines have to be greater than zero, does that mean positive? Hello? Cosines are greater than zero. So think about where cosine is positive. Where are they positive? One and four. Perfect. But we also need to find out. Oh, that's all they asked for. Oh, no, he says, yeah, that's it. What quadrant could it be in? You're right. That's it. That one's easy. What if tangent is negative? Where could that be at? We know tangent's positive. We know tangent of theta is positive in 1 and 3, right? That's it. Is that right? It is 1 and 3. 
because A is all and T was tangent. Number five. Sine of theta is positive. Or, no, I want negative. Less than zero means negative, right? Where is it negative? Can't be one, because everything's positive. Can't be two, because that's where students was, and they're positive there. Could it be three and four? Can it be three and four is sign? And, and I'm going to give you a better hint. Go back up to number three for a minute. Oh, we're doing, uh, oh, I'm sorry. They don't, I read it wrong. What do they want? No, no, read the word what they wanted. Let me take that off. Read it. They're doing secant. Sorry. I thought it said sine. When I think of secant, I think of cosine. It's easier to think of cosine. I'm sorry. So where is cosine negative? Isn't cosine negative in the quadrants that have x's that are negative? Uh, no. X's are negative in both of those quadrants. Two and three. Wait, what did we do about co? Because up here was, no, one and four was greater, was positive. That was positive. This is negative. Cosine is positive in one and four, those two quadrants. You did tell me? Sorry, I didn't ignore you. I didn't hear you. Four. We wanted tangent negative. Is that what the problem was? We wanted negative? You were telling me that I was supposed to do negative, right? So you get the you get the extra point for the day. So are these the quadrants where it's positive or negative? So I'm wrong? I, you, you're going to look me in the face and tell me that I made a mistake? I'm so embarrassed. Which ones? So it, it's wherever the X's are negative or the Y's are negative, but not both negative at the same time. Yeah, two, the X's are negative. Not three, though. I don't know why it's not writing again. Two, oh, it's not even the pen. Two, four. Four. Because the, the Y's are negative, but the X's are not. Only one of them could be negative. Either the, either the X would be less than zero or the Y is less than zero. Five again? We want cosines to be negative. Yeah, I did it this way. It's where your X's have to be negative. That's two and three. Sometimes we get the answers right in our work, but we're just off because of our positive and negatives. That happens all the time to all of us. Last one. Oh, this is the hardest one. We want the sign to be negative and at the same time the cotangent to be positive. So let's, you tell me first of all, what two quadrants are signs negative? That means the y values are negative. What two quadrants is sign negative? The y values are negative. Where is that happening? What quadrant? What number? Sign is positive, not negative. Three and four. Three and four. The y values are negative. Now, which of those would the cotangent be positive? Sir, can you tell me which ones are negative positive? 
The words? Well, well okay, it's, it's that chart up here. That, those are all positives. If I didn't write it down, if I don't write it down in quadrant two, then it's negative. The only ones that are positive in quadrant two are sine and cosecant. Because the y's are greater than zero there. So back to this. Where is cotangent? That means the x and the y's have to be positive, and it's okay if they're both positive. So which of these quadrants are the x or the y's positive or both positive? One, two. It, take it from the ones that are circled, because that's where sine is negative. It has to be one of those. Right, that are positive, both positive? Either the x and the y are both, I guess they both have to be positive. Oh, or both negative. Oh, both negative. Oh, they both negative. could be both negative. Three. It, that has to be happening here. You're right. So the answer is quadrant three. Wow, okay. That's a hard one. That really is the hard one. Because you had to look at two different scenarios. Now it's time to find exact answers for our triangles, our angles. So here's how we do this. Shh. First, before I label a triangle, what quadrant is tangent negative? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to draw my quadrants. We'll wait for Ryan because he's really busy solving oh, some. Notes. Oh. I'll, I'm waiting for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I was giving you time. Where is tangent negative? Is it negative in two? Yes, because the X's are negative. Those are negative X's. And the Y's are positive, right? That will definitely give you a positive tangent. But we want, we want tangent is negative, so one of those has to be negative. And four, you said? Because these are negative y's and a positive x's. Absolutely. Since y's and x's are what you need for tangent and cotangent, those are your two good angles. Now look very carefully here. He's telling me that sine of the angle is a positive 8 over a positive 17. No, it has to be the two quadrants that I've already mentioned. It has to come from what, two or three. Now, just because I said positive over positive, that doesn't mean it couldn't be negative over negative. Say it again. Oh, because... The 17 will always be positive, won't it? That's the hypotenuse. I just need to worry about where I get a positive 8 at in those two quadrants. Where is the y value going to be positive? Positive, the y? Yeah. In 2 or 4? Four? Quadrant 2. Ryan has it. So here comes, here comes my circle. Let me draw my circle. Yeah, I didn't say you weren't. Person who's doing the right thing does not have to blow their own horn. So you're drawing a quadrant in here. There you go. And there's my triangle. There's my right angle. There's my dot, which has to be 8 is my y value, 8. And the hypotenuse has to be a 17. If I'm going to find all the trig functions, what value is missing? Uh, the, the, D, the, the bottom. The, the bottom. Adjacent. Because it, it is the adjacent. Very good. It is the adjacent of this angle. Or it's the, I like just to call it the x value that I don't know, okay? 
So let me go back to my formula. R squared must be equal to x squared plus y squared. The reason I'm using r squared is because I'm missing the x. So I don't want to keep that under a square root. I can plug in the numbers that I know. Do I know r? What is r? Now, feel free to do this, guys. We know, we know that the y is 8. We know that the r is 17. What I don't know is what the x is. So now that I have y and r, I know I can go 17 squared is equal to the x is the one I don't know. And the y is uh, 8 squared. It's not that bad. You got calculators. What's 17 squared? 289 must be equal to x squared. What is 8 squared? 64. Well, what do I do to both sides to get x squared by itself? So you should all pick up the calculator and do 289 minus 64. What do I get? 200, yeah, 200 and 225 is x squared. Take the square root. Square root x is 15. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this up here, 15, or label it here, 15. I kind of like having them all right here, though, because over here i got to use them, don't I? Okay, remember what cosine is? X over R. Tangent, Y over X. Catch me if I make a mistake. Cosecant, R over Y. Secant, R over X. Nice. Cotangent, X over Y. Why don't they have sign in there? Because it's written right here. They already had it. Sine of theta was 8 over 17. It was already given to us. Okay? So let's do each of these. Uh, let me look. You want cosec, you might drop down over here and write what? Yeah. 17 over 8? That would be correct. 17 over 8. What would cosine be? Uh, uh, 15 over 17. 15 over 17. What's tangent? 8 over 15. Oh, yeah. 8 over 15. What's secant? R over 15. X or flip the cosine? 17 over the 15. And 15 over 8. Oh, yes. I was a little slower than you. 15 over 8. So look how you named all the trig functions for an angle that is in quadrant 2. Bigger than 90 degree angle. You just did. Okay? Whew, makes me sweat. Do another one. It's not the last one. We got a lot of time left. I think. Oh, yeah. So let me first talk about where secant is positive. What quadrants could I be where secant is positive? Think X's. Where are X's positive? Say it again. One. X's are positive there. Nope. Three and down here, no, X's are negative. I don't want three, I want four. There you go. Now, here's what I do. If your cotangent is a negative four, I treat that as a negative four over one. What does that mean? Which of those quadrants would my X or Y be negative? Because this would be uh, cotangent is x over y. Which of those, it, the, the negative could be on the y, which it is, guys. That's the only place where it could be. 
I got to be in quadrant four. So I'm going to draw my angle down here. What? You only have one, though. Huh? You only have one angle. I am drawing one angle. No, but you only have one uh, side plane. I only have the one side. No, I have them both. There's a one in there, and there's a negative, there's a, a four in there. So this must be the negative four. This must be the positive one. What am I missing? There's no R in cotangent. I'm missing the R. That's not going to be that hard. Remember what R is? Is the square root of x squared plus y squared. R is the square root. What's x? No, it's not. No, it's not. It's the 1. This is my x. This is my y. 1 squared is how much? Uh, one. 1. What's my y? Uh, uh, negative 4. That'd be a negative 4 squared. How much is that going to be? 16. Okay, so r is square root of 1 plus 16, or square root of 17. So to make your life easy, go to the side here and say, x, we labeled it as a 1. y, we labeled it as a negative 4, found out that r is the square root of 17. Why am I doing that? Because then all I have to worry about is if I memorized y over r, x over r, y over x, flip the sign, r over y, flip the cosine, r over x, that's it. Why not cotangent? Good. It was already listed up here, right? Okay. Plug in the numbers. Don't make me do everything. Negative 4. Over the square root of 17. Am I allowed to leave it like that? Yes, you can. Multiply top and bottom by the square root of 17. That gives me a uh, negative 4 square roots of 17. All divided by, what is a square root of 17 times square root of 17? Square root of 17. 17. Why is that writing? 17. X is 1 over the square root of 17, which is actually... Square root of 17 over 17. Y over X? Negative 4 over 1, or I'll call it a negative 4. Okay, time to flip the sign. Flip the sign, and, and if I were you, flip this one. Negative square root of 17 over 4. And the cosine, flip this one. Just, 17. Like square root of 17. Just the square root of 17. Oh, the only way you get good at this, guys, is to practice. And since you didn't go home and do the last homework, if I had homework today, the odds of you doing the homework would still be slim to none. And I'm telling you right now, all that's going to happen is you're going to say how bad the teacher is because... Man, I go home, I don't do any homework, but yet I don't learn, I don't know how to do it. I wonder why. You have to practice, guys. There's very few people who can sit in a classroom, hear the 45, 50-minute lecture on something, walk out a professional. That's like saying, oh, I taught somebody how to throw a ball and hit it with a baseball bat, so I guess next, next week they can play on the professional team, right? Or they can walk on the college team, right? Is that going to happen? Do practice. You have to do a lot of practice. And you guys think math doesn't have practice. It does, guys. All right, last one on here. You have 10 minutes. Okay. Cosine of theta, all I know is it negative. That means x's have to be negative. So what quadrants are candidates? Negative x's. Uh, two. Two, two, two and three. three. Those are where your x's are negative. And so therefore, 
cosecant, this must be my R, this must be my Y. So I'm going to put the negative, the, the square root of 5 cannot be negative, so the negative must go on the 2. That must be the Y's being negative. That would happen here, where the Y is a negative 2. And the hypotenuse is the square root of 5. That's the R. This was the Y. What's missing? Uh, the, X. the X value. Now, I know it's going to be negative because look where it lives. Okay? So let's do the R squared equals X squared plus Y squared. R is a square root of 5 squared equals to the X, I don't know, plus the Y is a negative 2 squared. What's the square root of 5 times the square root five. of 5? Five. 5 equals X squared X plus, what's a negative 2 times negative 2? 4. 4? Yeah, Subtract 4 from both sides, X squared must be 1. Square root both sides? It could be plus or minus 1. Which one do I want? The positive one minus. or th the negative one? Because it lives over here. The x's have to be negative over here. So here we go. x is negative 1. y was a negative 2. Thank you. And r was the square root of 5. Sine is uh, y over r. Over r, x over r. What is y over r going to give me? y was a negative 2, right? Two over negative 2 over square root of 5. That turns into negative 2 squared, so 5 over 5. Cosine is 1 over negative 1, I'm sorry. Over the square root of 5, which is negative square root of 5 over 5. I'm getting tired. Tangent is, is uh, y over x, which is negative 2 over negative 1. Positive 2. Secant is flip the cosine. Cosine. I don't have it, do I? R over X. R over X. That is a square root of 15 over square a negative, five. square root of 5 over a negative 1. I'll just call that a negative square root of 5. Cotangent? X over Y. X over Y, which is negative 1 over negative 2. 1 half. Questions? No. I don't know if we're done. How much time do I got? What time does it ring? 20, actually. We got five minutes. Sure. I will be, but I want to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw pictures for the next three things. Just to, I prefer to think about the X's and the Y's. I didn't, a couple minutes here. Look at here. Look at here. 150 degrees. Is it bigger than 90? Yes. Is it bigger than 180? No. Then it must be somewhere over here. Would you agree? Yes. And the theta we use is right here. How big will theta be? Don't say pretty big. How much? Uh, I wouldn't ask you if you couldn't calculate 40, it. 40. 30. Why 30? 150, 150 plus 30 is, is 180, so this has to be 30. All right. How about 315? Is it bigger than 90? It's bigger than 180, for sure. bigger than 180? What's after 180? 270? Is it bigger than 270? What's after 270? Is it bigger than 360? Then it has to be down here, right? What is actually the degree measure? 
How many more degrees to get to 360? 90. No. 45. 45 plus 15 is 60. Last one. 240. Is it bigger than 90? Oh, negative. That means going this way. Is it, is it going past negative 90? Is it going past negative 180? Is it going past negative 270? Oh, no. It doesn't go past that. It goes some of the way. There's that angle. So, well, be careful. This is a negative 30. Or 30. Think about it's 30. We don't want that angle. We want this angle. If this is 30, what must this angle be? 30 plus what is 90? Theta is 60. That's what we'll be using. Theta is 60. Theta is 45. Theta, those are called reference angles. You always use the angle that's touching the x-axis. And that's it for now. Yes, turn in your packet.